Uh, switch from the political sector to the uh, political sector mm -hmm. as it impinges on the economic mm -hmm. sector, the business sector. You mentioned uh, high degrees of regulation, uh, high degrees of subsidies in many cases, uh, high degrees of taxes, not only import taxes, uh, but also uh, uh, taxes on profits, right, and so yep. forth. We also uh, mentioned one very striking tax, an export tax, particularly on agricultural goods, which are significant in the Argentine economy. Yes. Uh, and that led to a farmer's revolt in what was it, 1999 or? No, 2008. 2008. Yeah, it was recent. All right. Uh, so all of these things then make for certain ethical dilemmas, right? As you talked about in your in your talk, to the extent that you want to do the things that will make you successful in business, if you're going to get those things done, you can't keep your hands clean, right? As you're saying, one of the things that you have to do in Argentina at some point is bribe people. Uh, yes. Is that a fair assessment? Yes, I, I, I would think say so. yes. Yes, I think so. yes. Right, so. So give me an example of a situation under which a business operator would have to resort to bribery. For example, I can, I can give you, if you look at the news from the recent years and recent weeks, what you see is that shipments and shipments of electronic widgets or uh, raw materials or components get stuck in customs. Usually the way to get that done is to, they, they will ask you suddenly for a bribe or they will say, okay, it's an arbitrary measure. And then the only way to not to get your supply chain compromised and continue to serve your customers and mm -hmm. make payroll, et cetera, it's usually to bribe an official. Okay. So, so that's, that's a really typical ethical dilemma that businessmen face. Mm -hmm. And there's this difference between, okay, I'm going to set up a business entirely on the fact that I'm going to break the law to get my business done. And all, but there's a difference between that and the businessman who starts a business in his own right, trying to do everything right, but then faces change in regulation or arbitrary measures that compromise supply chain, compromise their business continuity, etc. All right, so the changing regulations mean regime uncertainty. You don't know what yes. to predict and how to plan for various things, but then also you have a plan in place, but the regulations change so that plan doesn't work and you're stuck right in various ways. Yes. I see. Okay. You also mentioned uh, there's a great deal of uh, government regulation in the sense of positively trying to manage various sectors of the economy, and so some s types of businesses will be subsidized. And that puts other businessmen in a dilemma. You might be someone who wants just to run your business and be successful without subsidies, but the nature of the existence of the subsidies poses a problem. What kind of a problem would that be? Well, one of the... I, 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 I like a, an example that I heard a few weeks ago of a friend of mine who's a consultant. And she, her clients are mostly small firms. And now there's a line of subsidies of uh, to av available for uh, small businesses, which is for an amount of more or less almost twenty-five thousand dollars, which in Argentina it's a considerable amount of money. And she doesn't know what to do about that because, as a consultant, she thinks that if she doesn't uh, she doesn't tell his cl her client that this subsidy is available, she's failing him. But on the other hand, she knows how these things are, are being handled, how corrupt the system is, mm -hmm. how bad it is. He, it's, it's an integrity dilemma because she's against all that. So it's very, very difficult. And, and, and you have many d dilemmas like this in, in Argentina. And most of them are impossible to solve. Right. Or if you're a small business and you don't have a subsidy or you decide not to take the subsidy, mm -hmm. but your competitor, also yeah. a small business, does take the subsidy, that competitor has an advantage, right? You're more likely to go out of business. So the only ones who stay in business are the subsidy-friendly yes. business people. Right? And, and there are also dilemmas for that go even beyond the business people that affect graduate students, professionals, etc. And, and I... And we talk with Federico about this a lot. Being a, being a free marketeer, I'm against uh, public work and all that, but there are several jobs in the state that pay more than twice what the leading companies pay. So rationally, one would be inclined to get a state job. Sure. But when you know what you're getting into and all that, you would say, okay, so I'm missing the opportunity to, I know that I'm not going to get paid as much, so I'm leaving money on the table. Mm -hmm. But 
you face that dilemma of rationality versus integrity. And the point you mentioned that was interesting was you mentioned that we have a highly regular, regulated and highly bureaucratized right, political oversight right of the economy, but also that it is, uh, in your judgment, incompetent. And in some ways that's a problem, but also in some ways it's a blessing. Because if you choose then to fly under the radar in a more black market right, type of sense, you actually can enjoy a significant amount of freedom right, in the Argentine economy. Yeah. Uh, how common do you think that is? Well, it's it's very common, and, and yes, this this is, Argentina has Argentina has a, a a regulation system which is impossible to uh, to fu to be fully applied because it would bankrupt every every business in in the country. So, in a way, bureaucrats bureaucrats know that businessmen obviously know that, and this is and this is, uh, there's this tacit agreement that they are going to let some things go without saying it, say any, say anything of course in exchange of <laughs> something in return for them so it's uh, we have if we had to 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 do everything they told us to do and and it would be impossible so this 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 there's a very difficult situation where in Argentina Although it's a country heavily regulated, it's very easy to be free. But on the other hand, it's a sort of freedom which is incompatible with economic development, development and growth and progress. So it's very, very complicated and incompatible with economic development in the sense that if you're going to fly under the radar, you have to stay relatively small. Yes, uh, and, 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 right. and, and that, that's that's one thing, and that's something that happens in many economies, and that's that's a really studied, deeply studied problem by mm -hmm. by economies that when you face these situations where you have regulation uncertainty or you have over over regulation in the economy, what happens is that companies are usually smaller, and then since they are smaller, it's more difficult for them to compete with the world. Then they are less effective. Mm -hmm and that derives in lower capitalization rate for the companies. But also, businessmen face these dilemmas where, for example, in Argentina, 40% of the workforce is in the black market. Huh. And media try to portray these businessmen are as really bad businessmen that they try to keep people like in an unregulated system. But reality is that if they were to put everybody on the payroll, they just couldn't compete. I mean, and it's not a matter of they just cannot compete because they don't want to say they want to make X percent of profit versus X divided by two profit. It's just they just couldn't compete because if they were to, to incorporate all the people they know into their payrolls, they would have to pass the, the prices along to the consumers and it would be impossible for them to compete. Your uh, basis foundation, of which you're president and vice president, it's an educational uh, foundation, and you're deeply interested in the economic and political issues in Argentina. What's uh, the strategy of the foundation's educational mission? Well, yes, we. What we're trying to reach is uh, university students mostly and their faculty when possible, and what we what we do is. Uh, we try to spread our message mostly um, through academic events such as conferences, lectures, seminars. Most of them uh, took place at universities. We try to cooperate with uh, all sorts of universities, private, uh, public, religious, uh, or in, 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 in any place with that they open our doors, we are happy to be there. Okay. And well, our uh, what we try to do you, we know it's our uh, what we do is marginal. We 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 won't be able to do it alone. Is trying to change people's mindsets, mindsets and values about many things such as competition, free trade. In Argentina, due to some uh, political problems that we have in the 90s, uh, classical liberalism is uh, identified with the opposed of, of uh, what classical liberalism really is, so mm -hmm. monopolies and businessmen who do not compete with anybody and do whatever they want, uh, that's uh, what liberalism supposedly is mm -hmm. for. 
So, so it sounds like the primary focus is economic education for university students and faculty when possible. Yes. All right. All right, fascinating material. Uh, sounds like challenges ahead for you and for Argentina. Thanks for being with us today. Thank you very much. Thank for you very much.